Welcome everyone. My name's Neil. This is the Motor Chat Show. And today we have on the show, Mr. Davy Graham, who is the owner and a racer in the Patch Road Racing Team, uh, based over there in Northern Ireland. So we're gonna dig straight into all things racing and get the lowdown on the next season and obviously the last season. Joining us today live on set, a special guest. Today on the show, we have none other than Davy Graham, who is the owner of Patch Racing, who are a road racing team based in Northern Ireland. How's it going, Neil? Hey, Davy, how are you doing? Not so bad, mate. What about yourself? Yeah, good, thank you. Got a nice yeah. picture of you in the background. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so, Davy Graham. Welcome to the Motor Chat Show. Um, thanks for coming on board. Um, I'm just going to give you a second to just intro yourself, tell the people out there who you are and what it is that you do in the world of motorcycling. Hey folks, I am Davy Graham. I run Patch Racing. I am from Northern Ireland, as you can probably tell by the accent. Um, I do a bit of short circuit racing, but it's mainly road racing. And I've got Ryan Strafford, who's based in Yorkshire. He's racing for the team in Thundersport at the minute. And then we've just signed Garth Keyes as well, who's an Ulster Grand Prix winner. I'm sure you've all heard of the Ulster Grand Prix. That's basically where we're at at the moment. Awesome. And um, how, long have you, how long have you been running a, uh, a race team? Uh, I think we're in our sixth year. So we're doing all right. We oh, private yeah. team. Uh, and what... what um, what category of racing do you uh, do you partake in? What, what, what do you actually? What what kind of uh, levels? We're in the super twin class on the roads, so we're running with all the top international riders like Dunlops and Lee Johnson and Rand Farquhar's team. All those guys, so it's a decent level. Is the season over now? Twenty twenty. The road racing season didn't even start. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we'll had Cookstown. They run a race, but. It was limited numbers and limited numbers, numbers of spectators as well. Yeah, we didn't even bother going because we didn't feel it was worth our while no. getting the bike back from England for one non-championship race. We just let Ryan keep the bike in England. He's doing Thundersport at the moment. Okay, okay. Now knowing um, knowing bike racers or any kind of athletes, we're going to put you in that category that are building up from the previous season to start a new season how excited you get and how the it builds inside you i can only imagine how that must have hit you when you were told like you're not racing this year guys how did that affect you you and, and your races what was the uh what was the take home from this personally yeah um i got to the end of the the previous season i was looking forward to the break and the last race and then as soon as your last race is over I always feel, oh crap, now it's winter time, there's no bikes. So it's kind of kicking yourself in the, the arse really. Okay. Um, but with the year off, I expected for myself to get fitter and have more financial backing then, but with my own account, bank account really. Right. But it's, it's not worked out that way. Bills have still got to be paid. People are on furlough, so there's not much money about no. Um, the gyms have been shut so I haven't been able to train properly mm -hmm. so yeah. it's it's not been the kind of year I expected with the with no reason so on the other on the other side of things it's probably given you a bit of time to kind of reflect on how you're going to run the team how you're going to do how to I don't know do some other kind of training or whatever to to build up for the 2021 season which fingers crossed will be going ahead. So are there positives that have come out of not being able to actually race? Um, positives. Mm. Give my body a, a bit of a break, to be honest. Right. I've had a fair few crashes over the years, big ones. Okay. A fair few injuries. So a year off has been all right for my body. I don't know about the mind. <laughs> it's been driving me crazy. Yeah. Not being able to get on a bike. 
yeah. as, as I'm sure it would drive you crazy not getting your, your bikes out. Yep. But as for the team, we've done all right. Um, we've had two or three days testing at the start of the year. I think mm. it was March or April time. Me and Garth went out around a circuit called Kirkiston over here. Um, that was Garth's first time on the bike. Ryan has had the bike since, I think it was April, late April. So he's been doing all of Thundersport. And I think we're actually sitting in the championship. Second in the championship, sorry. Nice. Um, going forward, we want Ryan over here racing in the Ulster Superbike Championship, which is short circuits. And then I will do the road races in the north of the island. And Garth will do the ones in the south. So that's the plan anyway. <laughs> I'd like to take you back to when you was a young man and uh, you got on a motorbike for the first time. I'd like to know, or I'd like the people out there to know, how did you first get into motorcycling? What was the kind of first, the first motorbike you had? What was that experience like? Do you remember that, Davey? My first time on a bike, I was always... So from about 10 to maybe 15, 16, I went out on the back of my uncle's bike with him on a fire blade. So I was, I was always too small for his helmets as well. He's an extra large helmet. <laughs> I'm only a medium. <laughs> so was, the chin bit was up around my nose half the time, trying to hold on to him. So that was my first experience on a bike. It scared the crap out of me. But the adrenaline rush was unreal. Then my first bike, I turned... 17, I got my first bike. A wee Honda CG125. Nice. My mates called it the Heartbeat bike. Remember that TV show Heartbeat? <laughs> yeah. That one. Oh, the, um, was it with the Nick something or? Yes. Nick yeah. Berry. Yes, Nick Berry. That's the one. That's the fairy one. Okay. So my bike was real old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> and progressed onto we RS Aprilia one two five. Nice. And then started getting into the bigger bikes then. Uh Suzuki bandits and yeah. on fire blades and all that. Yeah, I do like a Suzuki bandit mm -hmm. as one of my yeah, old favourites. Yeah, heavy big lump, I'm only five foot seven and oh, yeah. I weighed bugger all back then, so it was it was hard for me to keep up. <laughs> Yeah, they are lovely bikes. Love, love the Suzuki Bandit. So, so you started off very young. Um, you got that bug. I mean, I'm taking it that since you were like 17, 18, you've rode all the way through. Um, did you have any breaks? Like, did you stop? I've always had a bike. Since I was 17, I've, I've always had a bike in my garage. Okay. Whether it's been a road bike or a race bike. A hard year of not being on the bike apart from testing in March. <laughs> When did you when did you start getting into racing then, Davy? Um, I think I was twenty nine when I started racing. I I just turned thirty six yesterday, so it's not been that long. No. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, me and my uncle would have went out and done a Christmas uh, charity run every year with a bike club. Yeah. We just raising money for kids' hospitals. Yeah. And two boys in front of me were killed. They were hit by a car. So. My thinking then was, bloody hell, I'm driving about like an idiot here. Mm. Um, and if I do come off, it's going to take an ambulance a while to get there. So why not go and do a bit of short circuit racing or something where there's an ambulance or medical staff waiting if you do come off? Yeah. That's that's how I get into racing, really. <laughs> what is it? No previous experiences with it at all. So it was kind of a sensible decision that if you want to ride fast, go and do it on a track. Yes. I think a lot of people miss that somehow. I mean, I, you know, I do know people who are out on a Sunday trying to get their knees down around roundabouts in London. And it's like, yeah, I, I don't quite understand. I, I understand why they want to ride fast, but not out where Joe Public are. You're asking for yeah. trouble, aren't we? So. At least if you're going racing, you're all going the same direction. Yeah. 
Now, look, I've, I've never done racing. I've never done a track day. I always, always mean to do it. Um, what was it like the first time you, you know, you get the bike, you get on a track and someone says to you, you know, off you go. And do you feel something extra in your kind of motorcycle riding when you're on a track, the experience than you do as if say just right racing on the road or riding on the road, do you get something more out of it or did you? Uh, more freedom. You're not holding back as much. Yeah. Definitely that part of it. Um, weirdly you feel safer. Okay. That's strange. But I, I've taken my uncle's road bike out a couple of times since I've started racing and I'm driving like my pensioner. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm sure it's not the same for everyone, but just myself it was. Um, no, that's pretty much it on that front. Yeah. That's interesting because I guess when you're, when you're on the track, you've got, the, you know, there's no walls, there's no trees, there's no, cars coming towards you oh, you're, you're the reason i do there is <laughs> oh of course it is yeah because you do it right okay so yeah yeah that that is what i wanted to come on to because there's racing on a track yeah. where you have got that freedom you're not gonna you know roll into something and and the racing that you do on the road with well you know they come inches away from walls i mean when you started to learn how to race, did you go to a track first or? Yes, you have to, um, to get your road race license. You have to do at least one year on the short circuits. Okay. But your times also have to be within 10% or something of the winner okay. of the racing. Wow. So you have to be pretty fast to get your road race license. Wow. My for eight, I only done one season of short circuit racing before I got my license, but it was a steep learning curve. My very first race, I had never been on a track before, before I went racing, no uh, track days or nothing like that. So I got beat in my first race. I came dead last and I got beaten by a woman that was in her 40, late forties and she had completely annihilated me and she was only one position ahead of me. <laughs> 30 odd bikers on track and I was dead last. Did so, that, was that something that spurred you on? Obviously I, I'm guessing you're the kind of guy that's not, you're not going to take that lane down. Are you? No, I definitely, it, it wasn't good. <laughs> I wasn't happy with myself and it actually took me a couple of races. You were saying about getting your knee down. Yeah. It took me a couple of races to get, actually get my knee down. Okay. Um, I had never had a bike crash before. So, I think it was the Easter racing at Kirkuson, um, which is like the second or third race of the season. I got T-boned by one of the leaders. I was getting lapped, and he T-boned me and took me off. And that was the first time I'd ever been off a bike. And that was in race one. Over the lunch break, we repaired the bike and went out in the next race. And I had my knee down, and he had my elbow down. I was going around the corners that quickly. Nice. Uh, such a change <laughs> the bikes that you have to ride just going on the technical side of the bike are you limited into categories on the cc side of the bike for your first year of racing or when you go to road racing when you go to road racing so when you go to road racing you can be on a 600 or a 750 that i think that's the maximum but okay. they're called support classes so there's junior support which is, what was it? It's 600s and smaller. No, right. sorry, that's wrong. Junior support is super twins, like 650. Right. Um, 400s on two fives and Moto 3 bikes. Okay, Senior cool. support then is the 600s and 750s.
what bike did you start off on the road with? It shouldn't have been racing. It was a Yamaha Thundercat, a touring bike. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow. So, so basically, you um, you can kind of take anything and modify it. Turn into a race bike, yeah. So, yeah. so, so, who's the mechanic then? You? No. Um, I had bought that bike. It was already race ready. Okay. Um, a fella, Stephen Morrison, who lives local to me, he done track days on it. Okay. Before he started racing, so I bought it off him fairly cheap and just went racing on it. Um. My mechanic is my uncle. Um, he's not really into building engines and stuff. It's more, just, you know, just basic repairs and yeah. getting the bike going. Um, JHS in England actually sort our engines now. Okay. But, what was going with this? <laughs> I remember my first race, first road race, was a Kells on, a, on a, one of the streets. It's just like, yeah, motocross track it's just all jumps and you've heard of the road racer Dirk McGee have you yep yeah so his mechanic was standing side of the road watching the race I was in and he came into the paddock afterwards and asked me what the hell I thought I was doing riding a Yamaha Thundercat road racing <laughs> asked, him what, asked him what he meant by that he goes mate it, lo- it looks going over the jumps like you're jumping a tank <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to him while making it harder <laughs> for the challenge <laughs> I couldn't say nothing I was speechless so <laughs> just had yeah. to laugh a little bit <laughs> <laughs> excellent but I mean I guess you, you learn from your mistakes right and if you don't make any mistakes you ain't going to get any better are you that's it yeah without I, making stupid mistakes but you know these little things teach us to uh, you know to, to up our game and to get better and better and better I mean the reason I asked about the mechanic is because I know that any race team or any guy that's sitting on a bike racing the hell out of it has got to be backed up with other people. You know, it's, it's such a team um, event, such a team effort. And you don't very often see the guys in the background that are doing, you know, the, the, the horrible, oily, greasy work in, you know, minutes to try and repair something as quick as they possibly can, mechanically and electrically. I mean, what does it mean to you to have, like, good mechanics on board to help you with this stuff? It must, must mean the world. It takes so much stress off you. Right. It, it started off when I was racing, started racing, um, just me and my uncle. We struggled. We really did struggle. Yeah. Um, he probably worked harder in a race weekend than he did in a full week in work <laughs> because I knew nothing about working on a bike back then. No. Um, now I have my uncle Andrew, Mark Paul, a Scottish lad. He helps out. And then a fella, Anthony Stevenson, who used to race himself in England. Okay. He's from Nottingham. So we're, we've all come together from different parts of the UK to... <laughs> Just get our little team up and going. Well stocked up on staff now for the team. And then we'll have JHS. And I think they're in Bristol. Yeah. So they look after the bike over the winter for us. Um, fully race prep it and uh, rebuild the engine and everything for us. I mean, you, you're going back to the mechanic side of things. Like you literally, you've got to rely on that person literally with your life haven't you Davey I mean yeah the the connection you must have with somebody and them as well to want to work on your bike and do something I know we all do things and we take chances and that we do we're guys and we we push the limits and you're very dark there Davey I'm just trying to I'm just trying to move the laptop about so I can I'm going to build up cushions here to set it on (laughs) remember yeah you don't want to be behind you don't want the window at the back here because it will it will uh it'll blare you out completely i don't know what the word right word is that any better yeah it's all right yes that's fine yeah that's good yeah you look handsome as ever yeah (laughs) um so so yeah so i mean like you know you probably do it without thinking in some ways because you obviously rely on these people so you know like you said your uncle is part of your family but i mean you, you are literally i mean one mistake you're 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 putting your life in the hands of somebody who's working on your bike i mean that's that is a huge, huge level of trust. I mean, I know you said you've been in the military. Um, and, and again, you, you, you're relying on your, your brothers, so to speak, to, to absolutely have your back without question. And it must be the same kind of feeling. You, it's just there, isn't it? Yeah. 
Well, I have had one incident before. I don't know. I don't think it was anyone's fault as such, but the Ulster Grand Prix. Do you know the track at all? Have of the Ulster Grand Prix? I, I don't know it well, but I know it. There's a corner, a fast right hand corner at the top of the hill called Wheelers. Wheelers, yeah. And you're hard on your front brake and into there to get down the gears. It's I think it's a fourth gear corner, flat pin and fourth. Wow. So I was coming up the hill in fifth gear. Touched the brake, go down the fourth, and there was no brakes, and it was lashing down with rain. So I went into the corner with no brakes at all. And you can't really touch your back brake there because your back end will step out then. And you'll go down. So I kind of had to motocross it and just put the foot down and go around the corner. But when I got back into the paddock, we took the bike apart, and the piston from the brake caliber had actually went through the pad. Wow. And was grinding on the brake disc. Wow. Just a bit of dirt got into it and just seized it all up. So that's the kind of thing that you have to watch out for. <laughs> when you, when you, um, yeah, I mean, like I've never experienced that. Um, he was obviously all right. No injuries or. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, cool. So, so you've, you've, You've started riding. You, you've got somebody behind you to look after the, the bike for you mechanically. Obviously, you're learning as you're going along. What made you want to, you know, get into... I mean, it is a highly, highly, highly dangerous sport. What what made you want to get into that? What made you want to do that? Into the road racing or just racing in general? No, the into the road racing particularly. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be any good in short circuits. It just wasn't my thing. Yeah. It's more shoulder bashing, you know, rubbing his racing kind of thing. That's that's not for me. Road racing, yes, you're trying to beat each other, but there's a lot of respect there as well. You don't okay. get that in short circuits. If a, a rider falls in a short circuit, he, he falls. That's, yeah. that's it, really. <laughs> but on road racing, we would, it's like a big family in the road racing paddock. If a rider came off, you're straight round to his family to see how he is and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I love. All that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. Road racing, it's totally different from anything else I've ever done. The adrenaline rush of it, like you're flying past hedges. There's Joey Dunlap once said, "There's a grey blur and a green blur. I try to stay in the grey blur." <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. It's um like before before you ever race a track a road race, did you like walk or ride the track first just to make sure how much preparation work would you do to understand what you're gonna be racing around at, you know, max speeds? I, I would imagine, I mean I don't know, but I would imagine you would do as much safety checks as possible or do you just go around it a couple of times and go, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit this as hard as I can. What, what's the prep like? So nowadays, thankfully we have like the YouTube that we can watch on boards of riders that have been there before. But generally I would get to the track on the Thursday, Thursday morning and get set up and then I'd take my van around and I would drive because miles you can't walk it. It's miles of track. Yeah. So I'd drive around seven or eight laps maybe. Yeah. And take in as much as I can and write a few notes down. Right. Then if you're a newcomer to the track on the first day of racing, you get on a, a bus or a, a wee coach and a former rider like Stephen Ferguson or Michael Swan, they would take you around and explain to you different bumps, uh, different breaking points, what corners you should go on each gear, or what gear you should go on each corner at, and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's really helpful. Hmm. But nowadays that I'm not a newcomer to the events, I'd still go around by myself. I'd still watch my own onboards and read my own notes. It, it helps. It really it does. Even for tracks that you're already, you've been on a few times or circuits you've already done before, you're still like every time go and check it out. A bit like a footballer will go to the pitch and walk around and look at the pitch every single time. If he's played at Arsenal a thousand times, it doesn't matter. He'll still go out. It's the same kind of thing, yeah? Obviously more involvement. Yeah, more so on the roads because at short circuits, 
the track doesn't change that much. It might get resurfaced, but it's still going to be the same outlay. On a yeah. road, it's a public road, so anything could be happening. Yeah. There could be loose gravel on the side of the road somewhere that you use as a turn-in point, anything. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a good point to add this in there. For anybody who doesn't understand the road racing side of things, I'm, but believe me, I'm no expert, but that's why we've got Davey here. As far as I understand it, all road racing is taken is partaken on actual roads that are used every day by the Joe public. So as Davey just said, it's going to be impacted by just general wear and tear. So for how it is one year, the next year could be completely different. Is, that's is, it. That's it. That's it. Yep. So do they, do they, they obviously have people, they, they close the road down the day, two days before. What's the, the road gets generally on the Friday morning. Normally we don't start there around 11 o'clock lunchtime on a Friday. So that's qualifying. Yeah. And then one or two races on Friday night. Okay. So they close the road for, I think it's nine o'clock yep. on a Friday morning. Once everyone is able to get to work, okay. that isn't going to the racing. Yeah. Um, then on the Saturday morning, it's closed early doors as yep. soon as they can. So that's it, yeah. Basically, the morning of racing, that's when the road closes. We'll and do a quick check of the road to check there's no debris or nothing in the road. Sure. And then we'll go. <laughs> yeah. And unlike circuit racing, you are, or sorry, unlike, um, you know, MotoGP or anything, you are, you, you are um, timed and you go at separate stages to the other competitors. That's right, yeah? That's only the TT. That's only on the TT. That's a time trial, yeah. So um, no normal racing, we're all, or road racing, we're all like normal. Okay. Just go off in packs. You go off in packs. And what, what signifies who goes where then? So when you do your qualifying... Yeah, if you do your qualifying, it's just like a normal race grid then. The fastest goes first. Yeah. So say there was 30 riders on track and on road race. We'll do them in groups of 10 in grid positions. Okay. So the leaders go, then the, the second group roll up to the start line. And they go in their, posi- in their formation, grid formation, and then so on and so forth. I can imagine if you're not in the first group, trying to catch the first group if you're in the second group how hard is that but your times are staggered that yeah, in that way in that okay format. right so okay. as soon as you cross the line that's when your time starts okay i got you so even though you're a race in in your individual group you've still got a time element to it as well yeah yeah awesome in matter of speaking yeah <laughs> and and patch racing that like you see you've been there for like five or six years now in the patch racing and this is your this is actually your team, isn't it, Davey? Yes, I started this team. Um, right. the, the name Patch comes from a birthmark. That was my nickname in school. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Patrick and I started it with just me and my uncle Andy on the wee Yamaha Thundercat. Okay. Um, it was only meant to be a bit of a laugh, but it's got a wee bit more serious now. Okay, I can see. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Um, I should imagine it's quite expensive in time and money as well. It can be. Yeah. I've got Colin J. Brown. You can see on the side of the bike there. He's yeah. from Cornwall. No, sorry. He's from Devon. Okay. You kill me for saying that. He's from Devon. Um, so he sponsors us. He's our title sponsor. Oh, cool. He bought us that bike that you see in your picture there. Yep. Okay. Our Suzuki SV650. Beautiful. So I was for taking a year out and I had a wee Kawasaki 400 back then. And I sold it. I was going to take the year out, and Colin came on board and said, "Look, I want you to keep racing." Um, cool. he bought us that bike then. Then we have we've got a couple of other sponsors. Um, they keep us afloat. They keep us ticking over. But okay. I pay the majority of the racing out of my own pocket, yeah. and then Garth and sorry Garth and Ran pay their own race entries, and pay for their own tires, and that's it. And is 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 it expensive to? I mean, I don't. You don't need to give me numbers, but I, I know uh, from the past most um, anything to do with uh, racing is usually expensive, even if you're using go karts. So I can imagine it's uh, you know you get to the end of the year um, and you're thinking, wow, you know, it's 
you know, do we keep going or, you know, do you get to that stage? Is it, is it, well, why are we doing it? Why, you know? Money you could spend on a year's racing. You could buy a decent second-hand car out of it. <laughs> right. Just yeah. put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy what we do for our, I mean, but then again, I know guys who go fishing and spend absolute fortunes every year just, just That's fishing. It. So, I don't smoke. I don't drink. Yeah, I don't go out anywhere really. It's race, race bikes. That's what I spend my money on. Awesome, man. Awesome. You um, you touched on earlier. You said you've you've had a few offs on the bike. <laughs> you told me about that one where your brakes went on the front there. Yeah. Um, you've had some nasty little crashes in your time, then, Davey. Yes, I have indeed. <laughs> Give us. For those, uh, and is this all while racing or? All while racing, yeah. I've never come off a road bike, thankfully. Okay. So, um, like, take us through one. I mean, are you, are you, can you do that? Are you? There's one I really shouldn't mention. It came at Tadwick Road Races. I involved a car on the track. A car? <laughs> a car came onto the track. Wow. Um. Why? Apparently, the fella in the car was elderly and was ill. And he knocked, it was an automatic and he knocked it into drive mode. And he came out through a metal fence and was straightened my vision. I, I couldn't go anywhere. So that happened. My right knee is mangled. Um, ligaments and stuff were torn and that's a mess. I yeah. can't play football anymore, which I miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, the bike was destroyed. The only thing we could see from the, the bike was the engine. So that says a lot about that crash. <laughs> well, that's that's the other dynamic of you know, racing motorbikes is you can totally wipe out your product in one second or less than a second. It's gone. So everything you've spent, all the thousands of pounds can be gone in an instant, I guess. That's it. It costs a fortune. <laughs> Have you had any lucky escapes? So you've been racing and, you know, you've just something by the hand of God or whatever, you know, you've just missed a crash. Someone slid by you, you know. Have you ever yeah. been close? I've seen two people killed at the Ulster Grand Prix. Wow. That was that was tough. That was a fast corner. Mm. Um, I can't go into the details about it for their yeah. families. But um, you, you see things like that. You see people going through hedges or clipping walls and stuff while you're road racing. Yeah. Um, thankfully, nothing like that has happened to me. Yeah. But I've, had, I've had a wall or into a field. I've yeah. only had that one at Tandergy. But um, I've had a, a fairly big crash on a short circuit race. Um, 2016, I think it was. At the Sunflower races, my birthday weekend. <laughs> and uh, I ended up in hospital. I was right. like, cold for, I'm told about an hour. A 120 mile an hour, first, or left hand turn, first corner. And I lost the, the front end. And I'm told it went straight up in the air, straight down onto my head. Jesus. So I, I broke a load of bones then. And I was, I was actually, I'm partially blind on top of my right eye. I was deaf in my left ear for a long time as well because of it. David, you're smiling while you say this. Because <laughs> I came out of it. <laughs> it's like you're cheating death, man. I mean, I know we all we all take like I. I mean, it's got to be the champion road racers. It's just got to be the most fearless people. Are they fearless or stupid? I mean that with respect. Or, or ignorant. I, I don't. I don't mean to offend any, any because I have no. the utmost of respect. But no offense taken. Surely you've got to. I mean, I would just be thinking of my kids and my wife, and I, I just, I, you know. I,
like is it bravery or stupidity uh, with respect well do you get i do get told about this at times um am i being brave or am i being stupid and i say no it's stupidity why, why would anyone get onto a motorcycle and fire their bodies down the road yeah. under bus mile an hour yeah but it's an adrenaline rush it's all about the adrenaline Oh, it must be just so great to hit that corner at 100 mile an hour and zoom around there. And like, it just must be such a great feeling. That to me is a natural high. You could go into a corner 100 plus mile an hour and you're absolutely bricking it. In fact, you're probably bricking it most of the race at a road race. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, but you're trying not to think of it. It's only when you come in into the paddock again, you can really enjoy what you've just done. You get such a high from that. If that makes any sense. So I guess like when you're on the bike and you're, you know, performing at that level, you're kind of almost like in a meditative state and you're trying to block out these negative things and just do the job. Yeah, you can't really think about the dangers of it or you will crash. You have to be concentrating 100% all the time. Have you had anybody said to you ever, like, I don't, I'm not feeling it today and yet they race and something does happen? No, I've never personally had that. Um, I'm sure it does happen. Yeah. But no, I've, I've never felt that. Or I've never had anyone say that to me. If you, I do personally get days where yeah. I'm buzzing to go racing, but when it's I'm t- it's t- time for me to go out, yeah. I'm like, I'm not feeling this at all. I'm not feeling, f- you know, I don't feel fast today. Okay. I mean, you do really, <laughs> you do really crap. But um, <laughs> I've never had anyone say that to me in Christ before. We said like you've had some accidents and you've got some injuries and you can't go to the gym at the moment to do your kind of physical training. Is there any kind of mental training that you do? Not personally, no. No? <laughs> I'm a lazy trainer. So no. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even when I was younger, football and stuff, I hated training. But um, no, I, I personally don't do anything like that. I do when I'm sitting, you're sitting on the grid and um, you go into your warm up lap. Then you come around, you're sitting on the grid for maybe five minutes before you can go. Yep. Um, I do sit and visualize. I don't talk to my, my team at all after when I come back in. I do sit and visualize that where I'm going, where I need to break and stuff. Right, but, yeah. But prior to getting on the bike, I don't. Yeah, there you go. What about video games? Do they help? Do you know what? <laughs> I've played the TT game right. um, on the PlayStation, and I've done... The Ulster Grand Prix. Like, I've done all the tracks that I actually race on okay. and keep crashing. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't stay upright. Um, I will play different video games to keep the mind sharp, you know, like Call of Duty and stuff like that. What is good test, you know, in a, a gym in Belfast called Spartan Fitness. Yeah, I've heard of it. Uh, you know, the wall with all the different dots on them, colored yeah. dots, they light up and you've got to touch them and stuff. They've got that, which yeah. is brilliant. It's good for. Uh, your reactions. Whereabouts does patch racing sit at the moment in the world of racing? What are you moving up to? And kind of what, what are your goals, Davey? Where do you want to take patch racing, both short-term and long-term? Currently, we are only a small privateer team. Sure. With not much backing. We've got one bike between three riders, which isn't ideal. So we're in three different championships on the one bike. Mm. Which is tough on the engine so it, it needs a good doing over over the winter and service quite a lot so that takes up quite a lot of money with filters and oil and bits and bobs that are needed yeah. in the short term i want to be pushing for a championship whether that be with ran or garth on board it won't be with me i'm not fast enough i know that i'm too old as well but uh the younger guys like ran and garth i'd, I'd love to get them pushing for a championship like Ran is currently doing. Okay. Second in the, the Super Twins at uh, Thundersport GB. The final race is this weekend at Cadwell. Long term, I want to be retired from racing myself. I want to, my end goal is to have younger lads coming through, maybe like a little academy or something, get younger fellas into racing. Awesome. They just can't afford to do it themselves or yeah. don't know what they're doing. They need guidance. So that's a long term for the team. That's good. I like, I like that you're um, 
you've got a very realistic outlook, but you're also giving back to the kind of community to help people coming through. That's awesome. Yeah, it's something I never had when I started out racing, so I know yeah. how tough it can be. Well, I was going to say, David, like, surely if you're starting to learn racing at 10 years old, you know, 11 years old or younger, you know, getting on two wheels and surely that um, a lot of the guys that have been racing since they were very we we kids uh, are going to be ahead of somebody who starts in their 20s or, or later. They have all their racing made up for them already. You're like a sponge when you're younger. You can take everything on board more. Yeah. Was it to say it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks? Yeah. Yeah. That is realistic, <laughs> especially in racing. Yeah. And when you're younger, you know, you can bounce back from accidents very, very quickly. You know, the majority of them, and you just brush them off, don't you? Yeah. No fear when you're younger either. Yeah. I mean, you know, two or three years ago at a short circuit race, mm. and all these young kids on the same bike as me just flying past me <laughs> in corners because no fear. Yeah. Or I'm, I'm holding back because I know the damage that can be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that must affect you big. T- well, it does. I know it does. As yeah. you get older, yeah, you don't want to put yourself at that much risk. But um, no, that's good. I mean, building up an academy, I guess, is uh, that's a really good goal to go. And and then you may a bit like a fight stables or something like that. You, you know, you'll cultivate people coming through, and you'll be associated with um, winners. You know, in the future as well, it could go on for a very, very long time till you're a very old man. Well, I had a fella, Stephen Smith, um, racing for me two years ago. Mm. He had never raced before. I brought him in. He had his own bike, but I gave him guidance and showed him what not what to do and what not to do in racing. And he rode with me for a year, and now he's signed for Wilson Craig Honda. Okay. Straight for them. Yeah. Highly big team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm buzzing for him now. Awesome. awesome. I'm already on that stage of having a rider progress for me. But you must get a lot of guys that fall by the wayside as well. It's just like, you know, cost and time. Um, you must you must lose a lot of good people as well. Yeah, there's been two or three. Um, they do still dabble in bikes, but they don't race anymore. Yeah. Uh, a fella, Ashley, who was actually quite fast. He just yeah. didn't have any confidence. Um, he still does track days and he's actually getting faster now with doing track days as well. But he just doesn't race anymore. Don't yeah. know why that's a financial thing or just lost interest in racing, but yeah, it's a shame because he could have been good. <laughs> well, yeah, the one that got away, eh? Yeah, yeah definitely. So, so what about um, Mrs. Graham? Is, there, is she... Her, no her, <laughs> there's no <laughs> Miss... Your friend. <laughs> huh? A girlfriend. Oh, a girlfriend. Well, so um, how's your girlfriend w- about your racing? Do you mind? Uh... She seems to like the bikes, yeah. Okay. She's not, not actually been to a race yet. Um, this is all fairly new. Yeah. <laughs> so she's never been to seen to see me race yet. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge in 2021, hopefully. <laughs> so, where, yeah, when does the season kick off? Well, it's due to kick off in, I think it's April, late April. Yeah. We've got the provisional dates out. Um, I did see them. I didn't really take it on board because I, I personally don't think anything will happen at the minute with the way the way the no. country. If it does kick off, how many races are there? Um, I think there's, I think there's ten or eleven road races. That's not including the the TT or the Ulster Grand Prix or anything like that. That's just yeah. national road races. Okay. Um, we should be involved in most of them. Okay. Normally do a full season because there's too many races bunched up together. Yeah. Uh, too expensive. Yeah. Um, what's, it like, what's it like every couple of weeks, every two weeks or every week, some of them? Times in the season, like the first two races are back-to-back weekends. Yeah. That's maybe £400 or £500 a weekend. Yeah, man. Just must... freezing fuel and yeah. that's not including tyres. Commodities that you go through during a race day that, you, you, I mean, the tyres are useless afterwards, aren't they? I mean, spending that kind of money out and... Uh, I guess without your sponsors, that would just make life very, very difficult. With tires, thankfully, in the road racing, you don't use them that much because you're okay. not in the tire constantly. Okay. So it's not that bad. Short circuits, you would use a hell of a lot of tires. Okay. Fuel, you use a quite a lot of fuel, especially the big races like Tander Gay or the Ulster Grand Prix, general repairs. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Service in the bike, oil, yeah. filters. Yeah. Brake fluid. You're constantly changing your brake brake fluid. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. I do that every meeting near enough. Why is that? Just to just correct pressures and things, or yeah, just... to make sure they're uh, you you're not changing the full thing of fluid, but you're topping it up constantly. Right. Okay. You've always got to have your brakes sharp. Mm-hmm. You can't get spongy whatsoever. No, especially not after that one experience you had before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely not. For people that um, have never done any road racing before, um, young guys or older guys, and they want to they wanna have a go, what would you, how would you encourage them to start um, doing a bit of racing? Would you just say, you know, take your bike to the local track and, you know, start that way? Or would you say go out and buy yourself just a race bike so that you can put it in a van and take it over there and just practice racing? You know, what? how would you get somebody to kind of start to enjoy it more than taking it seriously at first? Well, if they wanted to go on track, not talking about road racing, you, get, you can't do that straight away, but to go on track, I'd just say that just go and buy a bike Nothing too expensive. Yeah. You come off it. You don't want to be repairing an expensive bike, an old Honda or something like that. I'll steal it. Just go out, do track days, take your time, go into it slowly. Don't be thinking you're Valentina Rossi in the first few laps. Build yourself up, build your confidence up, and you get uh, all your racing pedigree comes through then. And then you can st- start taking it to the next level. Yeah. Start going racing, we club man's racing. So you join a small club? Yep. Okay. Take it slowly. Don't go into the deep end straight away. Do nothing for your confidence and you just end up going backwards. This, this I would imagine, is over a couple of years. It can't be. <laughs> I don't have the route I've just told you not to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then the deep end. Yeah. As I said earlier in the, the, the chat, um, yeah. a year later I was road racing. So that's not what you want to be doing. You want to build yourself up slowly. And Why are you so driven to do that so quick, Davey? What? I wasn't getting any younger. <laughs> Time. I was, what, 29 or so when I started racing. Okay. Which is a bit late in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to get as much in as quick as possible. Yeah, I can understand that, yeah. Why you've got it in you, use it now. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even plan to be racing this long. <laughs> either <laughs> but you're gonna you're gonna do 21 in 2021 yeah hopefully if it, if it comes into fruition for us but yeah we'll see after that it, i'll just take it on a yearly basis for myself reason but the team will still continue no matter what so where can you build it i mean like to to do the isle of man tt and stuff you have to do so many road races to gain your island um, license but you can't go straight to TT unless you're winning championships or something normally you would start off in the Manx like the Junior Manx and the Senior Manx Grand Prix okay yeah um, I've not done one of those it's it's too expensive you could really? two what, or just three grand just for the week how much two or three grand just for that one week or two weeks that you're there it's just too expensive I can't afford it so I would love to do it but yeah. just can't afford to so after you've done the Manx then you can naturally progress to the TT if you're fast enough. I was meant to make my debut this year at the Northwest 200. Okay. We went on the, the newcomers uh, week and stuff. You've got to do a week with um, Steve Plater and boys like that. Go around the track and learn it and do seminars and stuff. But then the racing get cancelled just after it was all over the, the news <laughs> that all, who all the newcomers were. But it's a, it sounds like for an ordinary working class lad, you know, who's bringing themselves up in skill and started a race team and you're gradually moving up and up, not necessarily yourself, but anybody, uh, is money a factor to whether or not you're going to be racing at the Isle of Man TT over a skill? Very much so, yeah. Unless one of the big teams take a chance on you and sign you up to race their bikes. You still do have to bring sponsorship to the table, but I'd say it wouldn't be as much as running your own team and paying your own bills, get your own ferry and stuff over there. It's crazy, isn't it, to think that there could be some talent out there that could be a world champion and yet they can't afford it. Well, my best mate, I'm sure you won't mind me telling you, David Herr, he's a multiple Irish champion on short circuits. He's done the Northwest 200. 
he was in the top ten. It's only ever road race, yeah. and he's beaten some of the top names. Mm. And he doesn't race anymore. And he's only just turned 30, 31. Wow. He's actually working for the KTM MotoGP team now, testing their bikes. Like anything, there's an, is there an element of luck to get into the top then? The right place at the right time with the right, right people? Right time. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's yeah, like that. Fast that? over. <laughs> That's the way it happens, isn't it? <laughs> I think it does, my friend. And I think you, you, the trouble is, is you reach an age when you, you understand that. But when you're younger, you can't, you just got all this energy that you want to, yeah, and you're good and you think that you should be there, but it ain't going to happen, which That's is it. sad. It's a knock on the chin, isn't it? But you just got to get on with it. It's life, isn't it, man? It's life. So what do you want to say to your fans out there for the 2021? And obviously 2020, you've been building up. So you've probably got some great people that support you and, you know, look forward to your races. They're on your Facebook pages. And is there anything you want to say out to your fans for getting ready for the next year? Anything, any exciting news or anything that's uh, coming up? Um, if the racing goes ahead, it's going to be a good one for patch racing. Um, I'd like to think we're pushing at the front end of the Ulster Superbikes with Ran, awesome. myself, and Garth. We'll do everything we can to stay with the front runners in the roads. Um, thanks for your support over the year. I know it's been a horrible year for everyone. Um, but hopefully we'll see you in 2021. Fingers crossed. Sounds like patch racing are going the right way to me. It's got your head screwed on. You've got the right people. You've got the bike. You've got the sponsors. It's all going the right kind of way. And I think... Yeah, you, you attract more as you as you're going along if you're that positive, you know. Well, we are a small privateer team with small backing, sponsorship yeah. wise. Yeah. So if anyone wants to come on board, whether that's in the club thirty that we'll have for all the the race supporters, or more financial backing as a sponsor, main sponsor, come on ahead. Yeah. Just in touch. So in in the world of motorcycling, if you um, become a sponsor, what what would you get from it? What would I get from it as a sponsor if I was going to inject a few grand into the team? Well, generally, we're a small team. We can't give you anything on the world stage or the international stage. But no. um, we've got all our social media that you would be mentioned in interviews and all our social media posts. Yeah. Your logo or your name would be on the bike on Team Clothing. Yeah. And I'd get your name out there as much as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. So your current sponsor, I know you said earlier, but if you could just, do you want to mention your sponsor on here now? Yes, Colin Brown. Um, he's the main man. Colin Brown? Colin, Colin J. Brown, yeah. Colin J. Brown. Um, he, he keeps us floating. He's, he's a man. Awesome. A lovely fella as well. Okay. And is, is he got, is he, he's, he's a man or is he a business? He's a man. Okay. But he manages a construction company. Okay, awesome. He's down as Colin J. Brown Construction on the bike. Colin J. Brown Construction. Okay, so we want to say to Colin J. Brown Construction, thank you for sponsoring um, Patch Racing because they, you know, they've got awesome things coming up and uh, your help is helping them to progress this system. I mean, it's oh. just it's awesome. Very much so. And he comes yeah. over and watches us too a couple of times a year. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. We, we people like that giving back to the community and something they love. For me, that is uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, if there's more of us that get together, more people get together and support, you know, the kind of things you're doing, um, the world's going to be just a lovelier place. Let's face it. <laughs> that's hope so. <laughs> of course it will. Of course it will. So thanks for coming on board, Davy. Have you got any last things you want to say to everybody before? You go. Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space. Patch racing. Watch them because uh, good things are coming. What's the first race of 2021? So I think it's it's either going to be a short circuit race to get up to scratch at yep. Easter, okay. or else it'll be the Cookstown 100 road races in late April. And if is any that that's going to be on TV? No, it'll not be live on TV, but there will be highlights. Okay. What, BBC Northern Ireland or something like that. 
Okay, so we can do it that way, or we can we can find it online through the internet. So we can watch. Yeah, it'll be on the BBC website anyway. Yeah, it's on the BBC website. Okay, awesome. Um, obviously, you have got your Facebook page, which is Patch Racing. Patch Racing. Okay. Um, there's Twitter for Patch Racing ha- uh, Patch Racing handle. Uh, Instagram. Instagram as well. Okay, so anybody wants to check out what Patch Racing are doing, following a real down-to-earth team to find out the nitty-gritty all about what it's like to race bikes because it's it's not just what you see, the nice bits, yeah, zooming down the road at 100 mile an hour. It's it's everything else that goes into it. and uh, background, uh, background work. <laughs> yeah, all the background work. It's really a lesson in life, to be honest with you. I mean it's incredible the amount you have to do but there you go so um davy thanks very much for coming on board um i wish you all the best sir i hope everything starts building nicely up towards your next season um hopefully like i said i'll get to interview you again in the middle of next season so may june maybe next summer we'll see sounds like a plan sounds like a plan um and that's it, really. I look forward to um, to talking to your other guys. Maybe we can get them on and we can do a quick interview with them and they can say nice things about you or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's it, Davey. Thanks, thanks very much, sir. Take care. Um, Take it easy. You too. Have a great, enjoy the rest of your day, dude. Take care. All right. Take it easy. Another really awesome interview for the Motor Chat Show. It was really, really good to see and speak to Davey. Um, it's the first time I've ever really spoken to him and uh, that's him behind us on the bike. And, uh, you know, he's doing some great stuff in the world of motorcycle racing. And, like, honestly, how these guys do what they do on a motorcycle is incredible. It is absolutely incredible, I can tell you. The speeds, the adrenaline, the sleight of hand, the quickness of speed of thought, it, you know, they take it for granted. They ride these bikes at super fast speeds. They take it for granted, but believe you me, it is incredible what they do and how they do it. And um, I wish him all the best of luck. Um, it's sad that the 2020 season went the way it did, but that's the way of the world at the moment. Hopefully they're going to rebuild up to 2021. Um, if anybody wants to sponsor, you know, I'm sure they will take on board as little or as much as they possibly can. This stuff is expensive. And like you heard say during the interview, you know, if you've got the money, you can keep in the game a little bit more. Um, so it really helps. But even just engaging and watching this stuff and just getting to know these people, really, it's really... Um, it's really endearing to get to know the people behind the machines because you just see them sitting on this bike racing at hundreds of miles an hour um, across streets. Racing on a track is hard enough, but racing through streets. And it's like the level that they have to go to to build up to compete in something like the Manx Grand Prix or the, or the Isle of Man TT is pretty incredible, to be honest with you. Um, but it sounds like patch racing are going to be moving up eventually into uh, becoming like mentors and training up uh, youngsters to become racers, to look after them, to give them good support, to make sure that they are um, kept safe and well, and to give them the skills to be able to, you know, entertain us at the end of the day. That's what they want to do. They're entertaining and uh, they're pushing the boundaries. And if we can all get behind them, that would be a great thing. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I wish you well wherever you are. Ride safe. Remember, there's never a wrong way, not on a motorcycle. Take care, guys. See you next time. Look after each other. Take care. Bye.